You are listening to the Fuerte Network. Welcome back to Hey, hey. Bitch, everybody. This is episode seven. Seven, hey, bitches. Who would have thought, honey? I wouldn't have thought. <laughs> Congrats. Somebody out there I was is on listening. episode one, and I was all like, okay, we're done. Okay, we're done. Oh, we're not done? Oh, oh they're going to get it. <laughs> they're my, back. They're back for another show. I'm all, our producer doesn't know. I know. Put a seat, though. This is our last show. Do you not know? <laughs> <laughs> we're moving on to... Um, other HBO, batches. we have a no, uh, show coming up. <laughs> Do we? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, welcome back. Uh, you know, Hey Bitch, the show where we talk about everything. Uh, everything. Everything. I mean, we're talking about everything. Everything. And as, if you watched the show before, you know we go into little tangents and you never know what we're going to talk little about. A little tangent? <laughs> Big old tangents. Those tangents turn into topics. <laughs> <laughs> tangents have tangents. Tangents okay, have tangents. a little side of tangent. Uh, well... I'm how was uh, your week? Because I know that you were in my armor. Um, it was fantastic. I'm not even going to lie. You have a smile on your face, girl. <laughs> and only a dick can put that on that face. <laughs> <laughs> I had a lot of sun, a lot of relaxation. Mm-hmm. And I may or may not have gotten some dick. Well, I'm sure it takes a lot of relaxation <laughs> for what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say I had a really good time. Well, good. You needed that, bitch. I you were, did. You were being a bitch. Ew. I, mm? Tell me you weren't. Tell me you weren't. I wasn't. You were a little cranky. Okay, a little bit. A All lot right, of bit. That's right. And then the crazy thing is, like, I was supposed to be back at FedEx on Sunday and Monday. I haven't shown up yet. <gasps> And they haven't called me at all. Like, hey, well, you coming in? So they apparently, kind of already and they're like, because I already gave my notice, right? So they're like, oh, this bitch is not coming back. Yeah. And it appears that way. So <laughs> you think I would know better because I'm in HR. Like, <laughs> Oopsie. Well, HR let me burn that bridge ass. so I don't go back. Well, yeah, you better burn it. Yeah. Knowing you, you fucking try to go back again for some goddamn reason. Um, uh-huh. I don't want to. Yeah, don't. Be- girl, you were going through it. Girl, I was going through and putting everyone else through it. Lack like, of sleep can fuck you up, bitch. And like, I'm still waking up like at two o'clock in the morning. Like this morning, I was like sitting I there in my bed. Habit, right? Yeah, I just have it. Like I'm there like two thirty. I'm all like, I'm bored. What do I do? You need a tranquilizer, bitch. You need to sleep. And uh, yeah, yeah, I need some weed. You need. That's what. Yeah, weed does that to me too. The, yeah, like some weeds. Like you've seen me before. I oh. either get very cholo, murderous, you get murderous, bitch, murderous. I get stuck or I just pass the fuck out. That's true. The, but passing the fuck out on weed is like the best. It is. You oh. wake up like no other. Like you almost wake up hungover from sleeping too much. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, I'm like, oh, <laughs> you groggy as fuck. So, I mean, I'm glad you're back. Yeah. I'm glad that you had a good time. You mm-hmm. needed it. You needed a little break. I needed you went that. to go visit your cousins. You had a little cousin trip. I did. And I saw my cousin, Sila, who I haven't seen. I don't see her often. I haven't seen her probably since like October. Um, I got to see her and I adore her. Um, and it was really nice to like kind of spend some time with her again. And I'm go- actually going back in November. Uh, Maluma. Malu- oh, yeah. For the Maluma concert. She's like, I want to go. And I'm like, I want to go to it. What if I just come here for the concert? She's like, you know where I live, bitch. I'm like, done. I go, I'll book it. Done. And so I got to look. I just got to I got to make sure because I, I, I'm, I'm almost thinking that it's the same weekend as Pride. Oh, here no, you can't go, bitch. and if that's the case sorry Sila, i love you but i can't go yeah we haven't had pride you're gonna come here two years bitch. seriously two years so and you know i mean before we were like oh we're we gonna go pride well, i don't think so because we kind of knew the, the, yeah. the thing but now that we can have it i want it i want it like i, I miss pride i want to get i miss the hot mess i want to pass miss, out on a curb i want to pass out on a curb with you <laughs> um i want our noodles at the end of the night <gasps> the noodles the hawaii noodles we always oh eat i want the concerts i want the mess i want to see that bitch that always gets fucked up and is dancing around like crazy me I mean, <laughs> I mean, I wasn't going to say it, but <laughs> I mean, it's the truth. It it's is what it is. Yeah, I'm it a hot really mess is. express, <laughs> but it's so much fun. It is. It is. I miss it. I miss it. So I was thinking what we should do is get an Airbnb near there. We say that, but we never do. Well, see, now we need to because okay. we know that we haven't had pride in a minute. We so we are going to get do, trashy. We need to do a big. We, need to do a big we really do. So I was thinking so it's November, right? November, the first week of November is like okay. November 6th or 7th. So if the Maluma concert is that same weekend in Miami, I'll just fly her here. 
Oh no, I can't Maybe. because it won't be here that weekend. I mean, I'll figure it does out. Does she need to go to the Maluma concert? I do. She really wants. Her. Is, uh, they're not coming here. He's not yeah, coming they here? are. When but I that? wanted to see it with her. Oh, like okay. me and her, like we have an amazing concert experience. Like when we went to J Lo together, we went to twice in that mm -hmm. same week. Um, we just had a fabulous time. Like I like we get on the same level. Mm -hmm. Like we enjoy it. We live it. Like fuck everyone else around us that they can't see around me. Right. I don't give a fuck. I pay tickets too. You know. <laughs> um, so no, we have a lot of good time. So like yeah. I, I, we'll figure it out. I'm really excited though. Yeah. Um, I have some news. What happened? Um, I busted my ass today. Where? I fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Why are you laugh so? <laughs> Literally, oh, no. I was walking down the stairs after getting up. <laughs> Did you not record this? No. I was he was. On wait. A he was in a meeting at work. <laughs> wait. Okay. So across from the stairs at your house, there's the three windows above the TV. Uh huh. Don't you have a camera in one of those windows? But it doesn't record unless you hit record. Gosh damn it! Yeah, because I just remember there's a camera. That camera must have captured something. Yeah. So what happened? Walking. How did you fall? I just was walking down. I was wearing socks, and I guess the back of my heel kind of hit the edge, mm -hmm. and it kind of just slipped. So I was already halfway down the stairs. So I fucking ate ass all the way down. And not the good kind of eating not, ass. Not the good kind. Not at all, bitch. I was in so much pain. You know how that, that scene in in, in in Family Guy when he hits his shin and he's like. Yeah, I've never seen that. <sighs> oh my god! Yeah, our producer knows. <laughs> I've never seen that Family was Guy, me, and he had to like jump off the meeting because <laughs> he fucking heard thunder like <laughs> coming down. Them, like, the Is that what that tremor was earlier yes, today? <laughs> <laughs> no, it was your panza hitting the floor, bitch. <laughs> my panza doesn't hit the floor anymore. <laughs> Good for you, honey. Just hit your knees. Yeah, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> At least I can walk down the stairs. <laughs> no, apparently I can't. Remember when I remember fell on the Spanish fell? steps? <laughs> hey, we all, now we both are fallen. Yeah, but I've fallen in public. We're, well, good. I need good you to fall in me. public. No, hell no. I'm going to push you down the stairs the next time we you travel. <laughs> when we go to Cancun. Oops, oh, oops. You fell down the pyramid. <laughs> you stupid bitch. <laughs> well, yeah, well, I fell. It was okay. hard. Ooh. I I hit my ass. I, I went down like uh -huh. seven stair steps. <laughs> I fucking was I, there for like ten, uh, ten minutes <laughs> trying to recover. <laughs> like I hate like okay. I know I shouldn't be laughing, but it's funny because I know you're okay. I mean, I, when I you mean, fell, funny. I fucking laughed. You laughed your ass off, you well, stupid bitch. When you fell, I was in in a very public, public place, and it's like it's one of those moments where like everybody fucking everybody, turned around. It feels like the music stopped and everybody looked at you, and all you can hear is me. And who was? was it? <laughs> It was it was Eric Jovan were there Eric and Jovan no, Manny also Manny too I was just laughing everyone was concerned for you I could not stop laughing That's why we traveled you were you didn't give a shit you were laughing your ass off too <laughs> Really Nemo? Really Nemo? <laughs> <laughs> Manny was Captain Savaho there cuz he yeah, was like literally he was so like, are you okay did you break anything can you feel this he's all taking my my what are they your called vitals. my vitals <laughs> I'm like, bitch, I'm, I'm fine. He fell hard. I'm, uh, my, my pride those and my dignity those, were injured. Those cobblestone but... streets are 2,000 years old, but they, they got a little crack in that, <laughs> that day. <laughs> Rome had another earthquake that day. <laughs> uh, but that, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm I, sorry I, to hear it, but I'm glad to hear it. You're a bitch. Yeah. Uh, whatever. You know Anyways, um, my toe, my foot bent to the right <laughs> stop laughing and my my nail my toenail lifted oh so half my nail is purple so that's gonna fall off soon i'm gonna i'm gonna give it to you in a sandwich or something bitch i'm laughing. not eating your food ever again <laughs> but yeah i i fell um i didn't go to the gym today because of that <laughs> bitch you're talking to me earlier saying you were going to the gym i know but i, I couldn't but go after that bitch why I'm not going limping. You rally, you get it together, and you do upper body. No, bitch. I never seen you rally. Bitch, I rally every day. Do you know how hard it is for me to get you on a car to the gym? rally for dick, and that's it. Oh. And the gym. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> you stupid bitch. <laughs> uh, we have a lot to talk about today. Do we? We have a lot of topics. Why? What do you mean, why? <laughs> it's a fucking show, bitch. <laughs> is that what we do here? Yeah, what do you think we're doing, hanging out? Well, this you, think is I would, you think I would choose to hang out with you like this? <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> How fucking... Let's start with some good news. Miss Mexico won Miss yes. Universe. So, like, uh, that's a little bittersweet for me. Why? Because she's from Chihuahua. Ew. Jovan's from Chihuahua. That's why. Wow. Wow. 
O sea. At least she's Mexican. Absolutely. Okay. I would have, you know, I would I don't think anybody from Sinaloa has ever won. Actually, the last one I think was in Sinaloa. No, she's oh, no, she was in Guadalajara. Yeah, sorry. But Sinaloa has, has represented, bitch. Yeah, but never won. There she is. Oh my God, she's freaking gorgeous. She is gorge. Yeah. I've got to give it to her. The yeah, bitch is she bad. She is amazing. She is bad. Yeah. Uh, beautiful. Uh, I don't know if you saw her costume. Yes, her it was costume. it was uh, inspired by Los, los uh, Alebrijes. Oh my God, it was yes. was a horned lion or something? I think so. Something, but it was beautiful. Absolutely. It was, it was like Coco. Like it looked like yeah. a Coco costume, right? Um, yeah, she won. Um, and I noticed that every, and I was, I was actually at Miss Universe when Miss Universe won last time. Miss, Miss Mexico. Really? In 2010. Navarrete? Yep. I was, I was in Vegas there. Oh shit. Yeah. I was there and I was in the auditorium when, when she won. It was, it was crazy. I'm like, I'm just like, just the thought of. Have you ever been to a Miss Universe pageant? No. Any pageants? They're kind of fun. Really? They're kind of, I mean, for gay guys, it's really fun. <laughs> well, yeah, we have you fun anyway. Have yeah, we have fun at a funeral. She, she, you'd like, be like, oh, that dress. <laughs> the dramatics, right? Yeah. The dra Like, I do that at home. Like, I like when like when I've seen, like, like, like Nuestra Belleza in Latina, mm. I mean, my mom will sit there watching TV, and did I'm you just like. push your hair out of your face? I was, like, itching. Like, I'm like, I did that shit, bitch. Did you see that? <laughs> Honey, there's nothing there. Because I was, there. like, scratching. <laughs> and it just happened but you to did go, this. Shut up. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Can we restart? So, yeah, yeah the, the, the the whole uh, showmanship of the show. I would love to because, again, like, so I think it was like I said, like, me and my mom and I will watch the story of some. And some of those dresses are amazing. And then some of those are like, girl, just because you could doesn't mean you should. You should, yeah. Uh, and I noticed about the dresses. Uh, every yes. winner of Miss Universe who uh, who has been from Mexico has uh -huh. won in a red dress. Really? Every time. We've won three times. Okay. 1991, 2000 and. 10 and 2020 i guess 2021 20, so every time in a red dress and wow so that's i think it's a good luck charm to wear a red a red, a red dress bitch is better listen oh, she was, she's a badass bitch and she there oh, no, it is. she's gorgeous There's oh my god yes she looks freaking amazing that was stunning so creative stunning and she deserved one she's she, she's gorgeous she's smart really yeah she's very smart i think she i mean a lot of these girls are are really smart and that comes oh, yeah. to like the misconception of beauty queens. Right. Obviously, there's those those beauty queens that give the dumbass answers, right? But a lot of these girls are really smart. And they okay. go, they're they coming from university and they're in their career. Like, uh, these I, girls I, are badass girls. I'm glad to hear that. Because, like, again, I haven't watched it a lot. Only I just haven't watched it. Um, but I'm happy to hear that because I think it, it lifts up women. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it, it erases There's that. a misconception. Obviously, yeah, because, you know, the, the bathing suit competition like it seems very uh sexist right but, but i love the fact that smart and they're and they're making a difference absolutely when they when they reign yeah good and I, I just love the fact that you can like a girl can say look i'm a bad bitch because i'm gorgeous and i'm smart and I'm like smart. i love that yeah and then i, I want to bring up uh because it got a little political it i saw that political. the three a lot dresses of the girls Myanmar. The, the costume the costumes of mm -hmm. Myanmar. Uh, she had the sign that said, right in the center, right the in the South center, Asian said, heat. pray for Myanmar. Because oh, that one, yeah. They're dealing with a military coup right. there. Uh, I think the girl on the, on the left, the, the rainbow, she's from uh, Uruguay. Uruguay. And she has a message of, of uh, no more no violence, violence hate, rejection, rejection. Uh, discrimination. So a little, a little nod to gay community gay in community. her country, which is amazing. I'd Absolutely. love to see that. And then something that's kind of hitting everywhere in the world right now is is um, I think this is it was uh, Singapore. Singapore, and she Singapore. wore her cape that said "Stop Asian Hate," which is getting crazy. Like the that is the, talk about using your platform yeah. and making a fucking statement. Making a statement, like seriously, like that was just I I, I saw those like because I was I had literally just gotten off the plane. Uh, on Sunday when when I got the notification that Mexico had just won Miss yeah. Universo. So they're cool. I'm excited. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm Googling it on the way home and I started seeing the fashion and I saw those and yeah. I'm like, wow. Yeah. That is amazing. Use I'm your, glad that they did platform that. platform because those are the really the biggest, I mean, besides COVID-19, that's a, a, these are the biggest issues in the world right now. Absolutely. We just talked about the beheading of that young man in Iraq last week. Yeah. Uh, Asian hate is, is Huge right around now. the world right now. They just passed like a anti hate anti Asian hate bill in in the house. Good. Um, and then what's going on with with Myanmar and, and the coup? I mean, we experienced something kind of similar. It didn't happen actually, but it didn't succeed. Right. With the insurrection. But they tried. But they tried. 
Um, and so yeah, Colombia with the with, with, Colombia, their, with, with their, their crisis, ongoing, with their crisis, Venezuela. Yeah. And I'm with surprised their that they crisis. didn't. I'm surprised the girls from Colombia and, and Venezuela didn't take the opportunity. Um, I'm I'm sure maybe it's a lot of fear. Maybe coming yeah. back to that country. And it, it, I think I'm pretty sure there's a lot of that because I was talking to one of the Uber drivers when I was in Miami. And we were talking about what's going on. He's from Colombia. Oh, okay. And he we, we were talking about it, and he was telling me that he he left Colombia three years ago. Um, because he was, he was a lawyer in Colombia. He yeah. was a lawyer in Colombia and he was actually helping a lot of people escape and, you know, do the, do paperwork and, 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 and helping them figure out how to leave. And so they caught him. And so they, you know, I, I forget how he was able to escape, but he actually in one, in the middle of the night, he ended up leaving and was able to escape into, into, I forget what neighboring country. It wasn't Venezuela, but basically salió otro país. He came out to another country and was able to fly into Miami and he hasn't been back since. And he's actually has a, um, he's threatened with his life if he of ever course. steps steps ground in, in Colombia again. Wow. Um, speaking of your trip, I mean, you 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 mentioned that you had been out and about and no mask in sight, right? Yeah, in Florida. I mean, the CDC kind of already gave us a little bit of a new instruction: any vaccinated person can stop wearing the mask inside or outside. Fully, right? Right. In any situation. Right. What do you feel about that? <sighs> so I have mixed emotions about that. One, I'm fully same. vaccinated, so bitch is happy about that. Right. Pero la misma vez, sorry. At the same time, it's just like it's... it's. You can speak Spanish, girl. <laughs> we're going to go on the honor system. <laughs> and there's a lot of dishonorable people out yeah. there who, who aren't say, vaccinated. I who, yeah, I got vaccinated. You know, and, and those are the same people that are like... Undocumented people should not lie about their status and work mm -hmm. illegally. Mm. Okay. Those are the same people who say, don't do anything. With, don't, the government can't tell me what to do with my body, but they're the same motherfuckers who will be posting over there and 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 and, and protesting abortion. Uh -huh. Same shit, sweetie. Yeah. Exactly. Same shit. So that's why for me, it's like, I wish I could trust people, yeah. but you can't. But dude, like literally no one in Miami was wearing a mask. Yeah. And and I'm, yeah. So I, I've, I've gone to the gym. Hmm. I've seen half the people wearing masks, half people not. Mm -hmm. um, I've taken it off just when I'm just lifting, when I'm not actually like breathing hard. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a little bit of sense of like relief. Yeah, I'm fully vaccinated, so I don't feel as uncomfortable anymore. Right. Uh, I know a lot of people do. I know people who are fully vaccinated who are, who are like, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna keep on going for a little bit, let this kind of last a little out. bit longer, let mm -hmm. me see how it plays out. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, your choice, right? Absolutely. Um, but. I'm I'm glad that things are moving. Uh, we're kind of laying we're, off a little bit, which we're, is which, we're trending which in good. the right direction. Yes, absolutely. So I'm kind of a little more more relieved, but I'm sure you got well, like shock when you saw a shit ton of people. Did you wear a mask at all, or you felt comfortable? So I had it, and so I was irresponsible at times. I didn't wear it, like especially when we're at the club, like you know. And then we we all know I have the tendency to indulge in a cigarette or two when I drink. Mm -hmm. Um, is so, that pe is that a euphemism for penis? No, like I was literally, like, a drink. smoking a drink. <laughs> oh, I, was, I mean smoking a cigarette. <laughs> well, same shape. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it, what what do they call it? Uh, Wieners. No, but there's a name for like it was a, a phallic symbol, right? It, it, it's, it's a phallic shape. <laughs> a phallic shape, yeah. A phallic shape. Um, Speaking of, anyways, <laughs> oral fixation. <laughs> anyways, um, fuck. Where was I going? Um, you were responsible. I was irresponsible. When I was responsible, I I smoked a lot. I smoked, so like I wouldn't have my mask on, like to then to, to take it on, take it off. But where we where it was super um, enforced was on the plane. Like I was oh, like literally, yeah. they make you okay, pull it off, take a bite, put it back on. So like that's it, I, I wasn't really sure about the rules of the planes. Do yeah. They, like, do they not feed you anymore? Do they not give you any drinks because they don't want you to take off the mask? So now they are starting to they they do they are do they, they do provide snacks and they do provide um but they instruct you the cookies and stuff like just that. Just eat. You need to just pull it up and then eat and yeah. then cover it again. Yeah. Okay. So like literally, like you can take a sip, you take off your mask, sip, and you put it right back on. Like they want that shit on the entire yeah. right. I wonder how long that's gonna last. I know. I wonder how long businesses are, are gonna. When is the moment they're going to decide, okay, the CDC just says this, but a lot of businesses are enforcing still their mask policy. Because I'll go to the restaurant and I'll have to walk in with a mask. Yeah. I wonder how long that's going to last. I think, I think uh, I don't know, because like a lot of restaurants over there didn't give a fuck. Yeah. Which is crazy because two years ago, when you walked into a, a Circle K with the mask on, they'd be afraid and they'd ask you to take it off. Yeah. And now I'm wondering what the attitude is going to be once we get back to normal, to normal. and they're going to... 
they're going to maybe ask, please take your mask off. And now people are gonna be like, I don't want to take my mask off. It's my choice. So I think it depends on the mask. Right. I mean, because, yes. You know what I mean? But people are gonna be like, I still want to wear it. And it's kind of like a new precedent. Like, yeah, I want to wear a mask now because of my health. But before it's like, it's for our safety. So they're gonna have to tear, turn people away who yeah. are wearing masks now. Like there's, I was reading, I read into this article, like a little bit of it. I didn't do the whole thing. Um, where there was people who are fully vaccinated who literally said, I will probably be wearing a mask for the rest of my life. Out, outdoors or out, outdoors, out like in, the, public, in yeah. public. Okay. I mean, I think that's a, a little extreme. I, I, I don't think I'm going to do that. Uh, but right. I mean, it's just hell. I mean, you, you would want to protect yourself if there's the flu or the this mm -hmm. or that. And I think people have become a little bit used to it. They're like, okay, well, not to risk a flu, I'll wear a mask. Yeah. I think that at this point, like I w I'm going to see how it's trending. Yeah. And like, I've seen how the bar, how the bars are getting here. They're getting packed again. Yeah. I went to Charlie's and nobody, and I mean, nobody, the go-go dancer, nobody was wearing a mask. Really? <laughs> yeah. so they're this, fully they're back. what COVID? They're like, what COVID? They, and they were out because they I were mean, welcoming back COVID. Our, our fucking lifestyle was going out. That, that's yeah. where we feel our safe space, our fun space. Yeah. And, and we haven't had that for a long time. So I can only mm. imagine what Pride is going to be. A shit people show. People are going to, not a shit show, but the people, it's, I think it's going to be packed. It's, yeah. People are going to want to Well, that's what out. I mean. Like, not a shit show, like it's going to be messy. Well, I mean, it's always a shit show. There's going to be a little bit of a mess, <laughs> but I think that people are just going to be so excited to have Pride again. To have Pride again, yeah. That it's going to be, be crazy. It's going to be It's going to be crazy. It's going to be really good. Um, <laughs> huh. We kind of have to get into like the negatives. You know, we got, we got to talk, we got to talk about what's going on. Oh, we have one more positive before we get into what? negative. What is negative? I mean, positive. The Mexico. What about it? And how the 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 soccer. Oh, right, right. So, so remember we talked about a few weeks ago how the Phoenix Rising had created like this. They they created like a partnership with with mm -hmm. local communities, local gay organizations, yeah. and we talked we talked about this cheer specifically where where they go. Oh, uh -huh. puto, right? right? So actually, if you look at this, the Mexican Soccer Federation has warned the refs that they may halt play. If they continue to use the anti-gay slur, right. and in that article, FIFA, who is basically the one who governs all of soccer around the world, it's the biggest soccer, the big, yeah, league, yeah, they have actually supported Mexico in this move, and they say you have our full support to make this move and to do what you need to do to Which erase that. Which is crazy that. because yeah. soccer is very like masculine, hyper machista kind of a yeah. sport around the world, not just Latino American countries, but absolutely, you know, uh, Middle Eastern countries. Uh, it's the world countries. sport. If it's you think about sport. it, it's the world sport. So I'm I'm glad yeah. that that's happening. I think again we needed to do something and say stop and and it's not this is not cool. Right. I know you don't mean it that way, but it's still not cool because it's perpetuating a uh, a stereotype. Uh, you're you're putting us down. It's negative. But you are. But they do mean it that way because when you because like well they meant it because it's an insult. And that's to what them, I'm saying. Calling it an insult is negative. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like they do mean it that way. They do mean it as a negative. They do mean it as like. Yes, but I don't think they are saying that they are homosexuals. Homosexuals, because we they, that word can be used in a lot of senses. And that, yeah, but it doesn't matter because you're already kind of relating it to being gay, anyways. Well, yeah, because they because they're using it in the form of like 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 for example, in Mexican culture, though, when 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 the least when the, wow. What is it for me today? I can't talk today. <laughs> no, girl. I'm just in a good mood. Uh, anyways, so cuando le dices a alguien puto es mm -hmm. porque le estás diciendo like, like... It could be a, it's a like, gay it's person like or a whore. Or a F word. Or a whore. Right. Yeah. And it's... Yeah. But I think they're not meaning it as a whore. They're meaning it as... They're calling you the F word. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because they're... They, in, for example, like in Mexican culture, gay men are seen as lesser than. They're mm -hmm. seen as weaker. They're seen as... I wish a bitch would. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? But I think that's how they're using it. Right. But well, I'm glad that it's changing. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. I'm very excited about that. Um, so what again, else? let's go to a little, we have to go a little negative. What you got? So the Supreme Court of the United States oh, is going right. to hear a case. It's Dobbs versus Jackson. So it's a Mississippi law that basically prohibits abortions after 15 weeks. And that's barely when girls are finding out. For real. If they're pregnant or not. Well, 15 weeks well, will put you at three and a half months. Almost but, four. It, it's kind of on purpose being in that time frame so they don't have a choice. Right. Right. Yeah, um, and the it's a, it's supposed to go in front of the, the Supreme Court, which is now 6-3 conservative because Trump decided to mm. squeeze one in, squeeze one in when with the biggest hypocrisy ever, when Obama was leaving, he still had like 11 months to his year 
and Mitch McConnell wouldn't bring his his uh, nominee to to the Senate floor to get confirmed. But but they were real they, quick to push this one through. To put it through, what was it, four or five weeks before the yeah. election? But somehow that made sense to them, and it was justified. So now that's now it's Coney Barrett, and that is three that he's put on on the Supreme Court. So now it's skewed, very conservative. Not even like half and half. It's like six three. Yeah. So this this is is it's concerning because it's reproductive health for women and their mm-hmm. rights to choose if they want to. And you could be pro-abortion or uh, against abortion. That's fine. That's your opinion. But Absolutely. again, you're taking away rights and, and choices from women. And a mm. lot of, I mean, the majority of lawmakers are wh- white men, old white men, making decisions about women's bodies, right? Oh. That's what gets me. I might be uh, anti-abortion, but I need to be pro-choice. And, and that's where I'm at. I'm not, I don't agree with abortion per se. But I'm no one to tell a woman what to do with her body. I think that every, when a woman has an abortion, she has to live with that. Yeah, my my beliefs should not dictate your rights. Absolutely. So, I mean, right here in this picture, we see women who, you know, regret abortions, which is fine. You can regret that's your abortion. That's fine. Your belief system is going to dictate what you feel about what you, Absolutely. what you have done. But you can't take people's rights away because you feel a certain way because of religion, because of whatever happened to you. That's fine. But you cannot take rights away from people because of your beliefs. Exactly. That's, that's always been my exactly. stance with anything. Right? No, and, and I I agree wholeheartedly with that. So the problem is Kavanaugh, who was a, an alleged rapist, mm-hmm. who got confirmed, um, is the the medium vote and the deciding vote. And he's uh, he, he's already been known to be very conservative. Yeah. Right? Especially with yeah. this topic. Um, and what he's been doing lately has been ignoring precedent. In other cases. So that just signals to us that he's going to ignore Roe versus Wade as president mm-hmm. and just kind of do his own thing and vote to to limit or kind of change the land, of the law of the land by by granting this law to or going for this law in Mississippi so, I, and, and delete and kind of erasing precedent, which no other Supreme Court justice has really done that they, they kind of have a a non uh what's it called a uh, unspoken agreement that they would not fuck with precedent but this motherfucker doesn't care he he's been going against precedent and allowing things to happen that erase precedent i don't i don't think i could ever i don't think i've ever seen that much white eyeball from you <laughs> it's a on the back of your head bitch <laughs> i just like for me it's just like it's it's i don't know how to translate this english but all the i vamos a parar yeah. Like, like seriously, like, like where, where, where do we get? Where does off? it stop? Where the, does where, where does where, how do we stop this? Per- I mean, it's hard to stop this because it's such a skewed um, conservative right now. There is a talk of of adding more Seats justices, justices to mm-hmm. to to eleven. So it's again back kind of we're in the middle. Mm-hmm. I th- because right now, if 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 they do this to Roe versus Wade, like. They'll be able to do anything. Like I get, I get people's stance on you know, like where do you where do you say it's a life? Like I get that, and I'm not here to play. I'm obviously no scientist, whatever, but it is what it is, right? I just think like, who am I to tell a woman what to do with her body? Even like I, I try to put myself in, in a in a parental standpoint. Like like if I were the father. Mm-hmm. She has to carry that child for nine months. Right. She has to go through the changes that her body's going to go through and put her life at risk. And put her life at cases. risk. And like, and like, from what like I've had this conversation with people, and they say, "Well, it's not that much of a risk anymore. A normal birth, the normal pregnancy, a the average pregnancy. You're right, but you don't know what your pregnancy is going to hold. You don't know anything. Yeah. So for me, like, like, like. I think that to sit there and like I, I read the statistic, a woman can only give birth to maximum two children in one year. Well, there's limits, right? What do you mean? Well, there's limits. They only have one. Because of the <laughs> well, one woman because of the the intubation and, period, yeah, like the, right. the, the nine pregnancy months. nine months. Yeah. So let's say she had one in the beginning. She probably have one within you know forty days of diet, and mm. then you know nine other nine months. But a man can have endless. Shit, have kids. Seriously. <laughs> You know what I mean? And so to me, it's like, who needs more control? 
women. The reckless men. abandonment that he's yeah. doing by planting his seed everywhere he goes. Yep. Or the woman who can only do one or two. Like yeah. it's it's an easier fix for a man to do, but because it's a man's world, yeah. and I'm a man, like I get that. But I'm not I'm not I'm not that that close minded to believe that. Yo, bro, like step it up. I'll take ownership, and, and, and if you don't what, want kids, then like. But that's what society. That's what the roles or the role that society has placed upon women. Women should control their body. Women should be smarter. Women should not dress a certain way. Women should... They're always placed blame on. Like so, The responsibility is on them. Yeah. And men are just uh, uh, okay to do whatever the fuck they want because this world is built for men, right? Get the fuck out of here. Exactly. With that Get the fuck out of here. Like, so I, I, I mean, technically, <laughs> a man can impregnate hundreds of women if if he really, truly he really wanted, wanted to. to. Yeah. And each woman has to be responsible not to. But he can be a hound dog and, and and fuck like a bunny. But we as society still look at him as a player. And we look at the women as a whore or a prostitute or a slut. Yeah, right? it's that double standard, right? Exactly. So it's like, it's like, oh. And that's what pisses me. Like, I'm, I was raised a feminist. Like, my mother is... Uh, I was I, raised a feminist, right? Uh, a feminist, <laughs> stupid bitch. No. I can't stand you. Um, I, I was raised to uplift women. I was raised right. that a woman is sacred. And... I was raised to believe that a woman is capable of anything that a man can do. I feel like women are a lot stronger sometimes in, in a lot of cases. <laughs> Girl, this is a man I hear some real bitches. <laughs> yeah. Getting um, sick. Have you ever seen a man get sick and the, and the, and the difference between that and, and the mom yeah. getting sick? She's still doing chores. She's still taking yeah. care of the kids. And the dad's like in the bedroom dying. dying Because like, he has a... a a sore throat. A little sore throat. A little, throat. Right. A little sore throat. He's got an itch in his throat. <laughs> so, get the fuck out of here. We got to take, we gotta keep an eye on this because this this could be it's, This is going to get interesting. This yeah. is going to get very interesting. Um, on, a, on a lighter note, it's just lighter for me because it makes me fucking laugh. Oh, shit. Um, Why? So, you know who the QAnon shaman is? Oh, God. Yes. So, he, his name is Jacob Chansley, his real name, but he goes by Jake. Ange Isn't he from here? Angel Angelino or something like that. He's from here, from Chandler, I think. Um, so he Quat has waffle. a defense, right? He has lawyers who are who he's working with, mm -hmm. who again are giving me that sad little, sad little defense. That I mean, it is true, but how dare you use it? Trump propaganda forced me to do this. Um, they convinced me to do it. Um, I felt I needed to be there. They were stealing my vote, which is true because he he incited this. Right. Right. Um, but if you ask any Republican, all of a sudden he incited this. Right. Because uh -huh. it's to their defense. But any other person who was not this is Trump didn't do anything to yeah. incite. But this. if you were there. Oh, it was yeah. Him. It was. Him. Oh, because now you need to get off. So now all of a sudden Trump is the bad guy. Man, get the fuck out of here. And the lawyer, which made me laugh. I'm leaving. The this lawyer is... for this guy, his de his defense is saying basically calling calling Trump supporters who went to the insurrection January 6th are stupid, right? Duh. Here's the, here's the quote. Um, uh, his name is uh, Watkins, the lawyer. He says, a lot of these defendants, and I'm going to use this colloquial term, perhaps disrespectfully, but they are effing short bus people. <laughs> these are people with brain damage. They're, F Fucking use the word. R word. I don't use the right. R word. Um, they're on the goddamn spectrum. And he's, uh, so that's his quote. That's his defense. I'm bothered who, by that quote, but go ahead. Well, on so a, many levels. He's defending a Republican, a Republican who was in the insurrection. So I, 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 I get, where he's, I get where he's coming from because that's the way they talk. But he's saying that Chansley, the, the shaman, has Asperger's syndrome. So blaming mental health now. Shifting the blame to mental health. And not someone's choices, right? So choices to believe propaganda, choices to believe lies, choices to ignore facts. He's blaming Trump and mental health. And saying that anybody who was there that day is is mentally ill, is is uh, brain damaged. And I just find it <sighs> fucking hilarious because <laughs> this is what we're all thinking. <laughs> but he said it. <laughs> First of all, you don't get to fucking do that. 
bitch. That, that's how <laughs> they get away with it. That's why they want to get away with it. You don't get to fucking don't, do that. All don't. of a sudden, because I... Uh, <laughs> uh, are you going to angry cry? <laughs> bitch. Okay. Didn't he start off by like saying that he wanted all like gluten-free and organic meals in yeah, prison? Yeah, he got it. Like, a judge gave well, him uh, got, like, organic uh, food. Okay. Let me, let me, okay. First and foremost, first and foremost, let me regroup, rally, <laughs> let me regroup, because the bitch is about to go off and I don't want to do this incorrectly. Okay. First and foremost, how fucking dare you try to say that because of Asperger's? I'm going to start there. Mm. I have a cousin who has Asperger's, mm. and in no way, as much as I know him, he's, that's my family, that's my blood, never would my cousin make a stupid decision like that, regardless of how advanced or not advanced or whatever you want to call it. Oh, we're on the is. spectrum. We're is. on the spectrum. He is. I'm sorry. You don't get to fucking do that. Secondly, I have another cousin who is, who has, who's autistic. Mm. And this kid is, a, is fucking brilliant. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I get that there's some social issues or some social misconnections. I get that part. Yeah. But even then, like, he knows, like, you don't. Uh, <laughs> third of all, how fucking convenient because most of the the conservatives or mm -hmm. Republicans that I know don't believe in mental health as an issue. Oh, that's not. It's not a disease. Mental health is not a thing. Right. How fucking? Only when convenient. How fucking dare you? Because it's convenient to you because, all of a sudden. Let's be Man. honest. This is in in excusable. So they're trying to find the scapegoat. Who can I blame? What can I blame? Without actually punishing the people who were there, without actually taking responsibility for what they did, <laughs> and these people are the same people who were filming themselves in he the capital. He was posting videos, like videos, you know, like a so fucking proud dumbass. of their actions. But once they get caught, once there's consequences coming up, oh, oh, what? I wasn't really me. I, I wasn't in my right headspace. It was the propaganda. Because one of his lawyers said they haven't seen this type of propaganda since Hitler. And I mean, I agree, right? Because lie, ga lies, gaslighting has has warped people's minds. Granted, I think I heard a study on on either Fox News or something that said that like 60, 65 or plus percent of Republicans believe that Biden did not get elected. Uh, fairly. Correctly, fairly. Still, still, uh, and the whole Liz Cheney thing. People are are choosing sides. I and, think, and the, that. The GOP is has lost his goddamn mind. I don't even know what it's gonna be. It's lost his goddamn yeah. mind, and I know for some of you, I I use the Lord's name in vain. It is what it is. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> I, I I'm trying to. You're trying to word. Oh. <laughs> I'm trying to put in like a, a good thought, a good something. But I mean, it's just it's angry. just it's just fucked. It's fucked. It's fucked up. It, it just it's anger. Oh. It's angering me because. They're just trying to get away with bad behavior when they are so critical of others when they make mistakes. Cancel culture. When people, they're trying to cancel Coca-Cola. And these are the sakes. same motherfuckers who are sitting here blaming Trump right now. Oh, it's Trump made me do it. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be the first motherfucker who's going to go line up and vote for his ass again. Or if, go if to he, his rallies. Or, or go support. to his rallies. But when it was convenient for you, he wasn't your president. So here's my question. Here's my fucking question. Trump said, and I quote, he would take care of legal expenses, right? During one of his rallies. Yeah, I mean, where's your, where's your pray? Where, where's, your, where's your guy now? Yeah. Well, who's paying for your legal defenses? Obviously, he's not. Mm -hmm. And then I just made a comment about real, about some guys, some men can be real bitches. That's 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 a perfect example of a man who's nothing but a little bitch. You thought you were bad and ass enough to stand at the top of the fucking, uh, to to stand at the very top of the. Of, it's not a pulpit. It, it, you know where. I mean, at this point, it's kind of there's no differentiation. Seriously. <laughs> You were, you know, where you were at, at, at Pelosi's stage. desk on the top of the stage. Oh yeah, that asshole. That, yeah, you were. He was there. Yep. And you, you thought you were a badass there. Be a badass and own what you did. Oh, I'm such a badass that I had a, I had every you right so to come up here. Moment. You were so you were... proud of that moment. Well, oh, all of a sudden, your pretty little ass is scared to go to prison. Yeah. Because you're about to be somebody's bitch. Because they didn't think that they were going to get consequences. Because they have a. Let's say and that's privilege. The <laughs> and that's the problem. And that's the fucking problem. Yeah. Is that these people thought they were above the law and that they thought that. that Trump yeah. was going to get them out. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. And that, oh, remember that girl who died because mm -hmm. she was shot because she was climbing the window yep. into that hallway where mm -hmm. the, where a lot of senators were and, mm -hmm. and representatives were? Well, sh her family is suing the government because of her death. 
But you were literally endangering the lives of sorry, senators. Sorry, <laughs> not fucking sorry. And then they're, they're using the hashtag, like, remember, say her name or remember her name, like. I don't <laughs> even know her name. Who gives a fuck? It, it, it's, it, I just love how they're using that term. When you know that that term is for people of color who have died because of police brutality. And this person was literally jumping into a window into the capital and where you people, were warned yep several times several times to back the fuck the up the door was blockaded look i'm not an in, we all know i'm not an insensitive person i cry at bars i cry here i cry you are very sensitive everywhere <laughs> bitch <laughs> and i know that it's a life of course it's a life and and i feel for the life because i feel for her family because of the fact that now they're having to do because of their, because of her stupid decision, they're not they're, the pain that they're feeling. I'm sorry for that. I'm sorry for your loss. I'll, 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 I'm there. But bitch, you were fucking warned. Mm -hmm. You thought you were a badass. The consequence was handed you to you. you so here's what I'm gonna do. You want to use the hashtag say her name? Mm -hmm. Let me use that. Let, let me return one back on you. She should have complied. I saw, the yeah. bitch should have complied. <laughs> hashtag should have complied. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Damn, girl, you were passionate today. I got some sleep. You got <laughs> her thoughts are. <laughs> I'm just like it's like she should have complied. It's, like, a, it's a whole. It's it's and a I'm whole end it with that. hypocritical mess. I understand where you're at, but it is what it is, and I hope that each and every person that was there gets their absolutely due, and due justice. Still, and and they're still arresting they're people. Still they're arresting still people. finding people. So again, if there they were people of color storming the freaking capital, there would be a completely different situation it would be a massacre there would be death yep. so i don't ever want to hear somebody say oh say her name when she does not deserve that moniker that that hashtag that that let's say respect okay what, what was that hashtag what was that what was that fake uh massacre that trump came with greensboro uh oh yeah <laughs> was no was it her was it him or was it uh the who was it that the speaker the the one that was in the front the big brown haired one before Kaylee McEnany. Oh, um, the press secretary or something like that. H Huckabee. 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 Sarah Huckabee Sanders. She's the one who. Uh, what, what, it wasn't Greensboro. What was it? It was something. Something. You, you, but you know what I'm talking about. Or, or or Conway. One of the two. Yeah, one of them just made up a yeah. massacre, right? So I have um, shit. I was gonna make a really good point, and I totally That's a first. forgot. Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I um. Shit, where were we before you said when that? When you think of it, okay, we'll bring come back it to it. Yeah, let's keep so, it. So yeah, th those are that's there's a lot of things going on in the news that uh -huh. we want to talk about, but we don't have that much time. We have a lot of things to talk about in our in our main segment. Uh, but next time, I really want to talk about Israel and Palestine. I know that's a huge it, thing happening right now. Oh, it's heartbreaking. Um, it is heartbreaking. Um, but today's kind of um, we're gonna go into a different avenue of our lives, right? Okay. The last few shows we've been talking about our gayness, our LGBTQ, our family, our community. And we're going to kind of focus on being Latino. I love Hispano. it. Hispano. Like, what did it, what, how does that define us? Absolutely. Right? Um, so I kind of want to get into our, our stories. I, I don't think a lot of our viewers know a lot of, uh, of our story unless you're a friend. Mm -hmm. So I kind of want to go into your story. Now, don't tell me the whole damn story. Tell me yeah, time <laughs> pinpoints. No, pinpoints. <laughs> like well, like in regards to Where what? you're born. Okay. What kind of family you have? So I was born here. So I'm a first generation born in the U.S. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona uh, in 1993. Uh, okay, 83. <laughs> I know I wore that, that joke too far. Uh, 83. I am one of... Five siblings. Technically, I have five siblings. I have two from two half siblings, mm -hmm. um, and um, I grew up. So the it, it's funny because like I, I, it plays two parts. So I grew up in a traditional Mexican household, to an extent. To an extent. To an extent. I mean, your family is very traditional in the sense of like family traditions, oh. parties, millions of cousins, uh, the language. Yeah. Everybody speaks Spanish. Like yeah. you guys keep it tight. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. So I grew up in that. I grew up with our family Christmases where everybody gets together. No, wait, even before that. So like I grew up where Christmas, like we didn't get Christmas presents. We got trips to Culiacan. So my family's from Culiacan, Sinaloa. Oh, you told me about that. Yeah. So like my mom, I'd be like, so like, so like when we would go to Culiacan, like again, we're, we didn't, we didn't come up for money. Like we don't, like my parents, we've, we're not rich. We've never really been rich. It's never been that, but you've we, been, you've been comfortable and successful. My mother has, your, and I'll give that yes. her, that. that's, that's yes. all my mom. Um, but my mom has always been the type of person she's never forgotten her roots because my family yeah. comes from a very humble background. And so I remember Christmas is growing up up until about 94. We used to go to Culiacan every year and we'd be there for two weeks. And and the kids there would always be super excited to see us arrive because they knew Christmas was there because my family, all like, it was it was a caravana of like six or seven cars. Damn. It was a lot of us that would go to Culiacan. So it was like. The Vegas, the Lopez's, the Morenos, the Foley's, the it was a lot of us, the Guadianas and all them. So we would all go and um all the moms would get together and all the families would get together, the parents, and they would go to El Centro and buy piñatas and like little toys and trinkets mm -hmm. for the kids. And in Mexico, so usamos mucho de cerrar la calle, no? Yeah. And so we'd close the street off and we'd have this big old like posada for all the kids there. And so they would get little toys and candy bags and all kinds of really cool stuff. Like I, back then, I was like, where's my fucking toy? Mm -hmm. Where's my Christmas yeah. gift? <laughs> and then I look back on it. And Your like, Christmas I'm, gift is having uh, flowing water and, and a nice house. I was uh, for real, <laughs> seriously. Toys at home. My, no, my mom was like, you came to Culiacan, you got a vacation out of it. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but so I grew up in that and I grew up with summers in, in, in Mexico. Mm -hmm. Um so I, 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 I'm very in touch with my roots. I'm very in touch yeah. with where my family's from. Um, I'm very in touch with the family there. Like my mom on her dad's side is one of 16 siblings. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, for the most part, I think I know all of them. I've known all of them. And I'm really close to them with my cousins. You know, I met most of them in 2010. Mm. Uh, I'm really close <laughs> to a lot of my cousins. And so I, I've had a like, very traditional Mexican upbringing where you mm -hmm. are tied to a lot of family. Um, I remember growing up, like up until I was, became taller than my brother, I had to share some of his clothing. Like if yeah. he wouldn't use it, I, I had it. So for a couple of years in junior high, for like a year in junior high, it was a very vaquero. Don't ask. Um, <laughs> it was a look. It was a look. <laughs> a recycled look. Um, I liked it, but it was, I don't know, like it, my family, like I look back and I, but when you look at how I grew up based on like some other people in my family, like my, some of my cousins, I did grow up with a little bit more um privilege uh um, i wouldn't say privilege because i still went to i mean public you schools. were I, I i grew up with a little bit more luxuries luxuries so yeah, probably, and you were yeah, you were, you were a little more in a bubble i think a little bit I, I grew up very yeah i was very much in a bubble because i grew up very sheltered sheltered That's very the sheltered. I, was looking for, sheltered I grew up very sheltered um my mom has has uh, grew up very my mom had to really be tough in her upbringing yeah. and my dad the same thing because you know where we come from um, so like my mom kind of raised us with the idea of, um, my kids will never go through what yeah. I went through, which is what a lot of immigrants, Absolutely. Parents do. that's what my parents yeah. were. That my, my parents came to this country because they wanted to give their children a better life. Yeah. Obviously they're themselves a better life as well. Absolutely. But I think a lot of the mentality with immigrating is my future, the future of my kids. I want to ensure a yeah. good one. Right. Yeah. Um, so I could definitely relate with that kind of immigrant upbringing because mm -hmm. your parents were born in Mexico. Yeah. So we're both for, I consider myself a, f a first generation only because yeah, I was born in Mexico, but I came when I was four. You were raised here. I was raised here. So, so I, I would give you that. You're the first generation raised yeah. in the U S yeah. I, I could, I think I could say that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, not technically, but I, 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 I say that only because I was raised with uh, the mentality of like the American dream. Absolutely. I went to school. I went to card kindergarten. I didn't go to school in Mexico. And even your English is very perfect. It's yeah, very whenever, proper. Like there's no accent. I don't have an accent. Right. So, and my, which is funny because my, my, my brother that's above me, Jorge, he, he, he has an accent. Yeah, he does. But I'm the only one without an accent, even though. Even Roberto Carlos has a little yeah. bit of an accent. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah. So that, I mean, I was born in Edmosillo. Like right. I said. Okay. We, I was, I don't remember much of my interactions in Mexico. Okay. I don't remember a lot of my life because it's four years old. Yeah. I do remember coming here though. Um, what was that like? It was interesting because okay. I knew that I wasn't from the United States. Okay. I knew this. And I wasn't one of those, uh, I wasn't a dreamer where they were not told. A lot of the dreamers were not told they don't have papers. They'll, they'll, they discover when they're like, okay, I want to go drive a car. 
I mean, and they're like, so, oh, yeah. yeah, we need to have a conversation about that. Right. Hmm. Um, I understood that I wasn't from here. I, I came when I was four. I remember crossing the border. I remember crossing through a hole in the fence. Really? Yeah. I'm, I, I came here, uh, let's say, not legal. Undocumented. <laughs> Undocumented. Uh, but I always, I always had that. My experience with the police was different because my experience with police was not that they were bad, but I couldn't get caught. Yeah. Right. So every time there was a police officer, my parents would tell me to duck. Right. Mm -hmm. It's that it's that experience of that Latino experience of like duck. Mm -hmm. There's no trust for police because they can call immigration. Right. It was a whole thing. Yeah. I remember one time when uh, at my house, there was a crash right in front of my house and it was pretty bad. The, the, the guy in the truck was pretty, pretty hurt. And we went out to go help him. We opened the door. The car was smoking. And all he was telling us is, please don't call police. Please don't call police. And I, my where my mom lives is Little Mexico. It's like yeah. northern Tempe, oh, that neighborhood, that neighborhood uh, a very dense Hispanic Latino. community mm. right there, right? And I couldn't understand why at that point because I was like 10, 11. I didn't know really, right? And it was, it was crazy looking back at the moment and be like, this person would rather be her, risk their lives yeah. before they would want the police to be called. So it was like, it was crazy. Yeah. So that experience in, in hindsight has, has really shaped my view of my own experience, but the experience yeah. of my community. Um, but yeah, I, like I said, I'm, I think I'm first generation just because I, I do hold a lot of memories for Mexico, but not enough to be like a deep, profound yeah. feeling of, belonging yeah right mm -hmm. but my family you know spanish is my first language yeah. you know my family Love we're fucking paisa <laughs> so it's like as a, well like i wonder like sometimes like what happened to your paisa on this like where is it yeah. uh it's uh, when i go to mexico <laughs> <laughs> you're in rayon and all of a sudden oh. it's the lo, 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 lo paisa, el nopal yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with uh michelas and, like, <laughs> the norteño music yeah definitely i love that um but I, I thought it was going to be a really good topic today because we, we've talked about our gayness and we, yeah. we seem to kind of understand our own identity as a gay person. Absolutely. But there's a different dynamic when we're talking about our Latino-ness, our, mm -hmm. our um, Hispanic-ness. So I look at it as, as, as like I, I, I look at people and identity as not to not to to pacify or to or to or to do less of of the 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 or disservice or disservice the the spectrum of autism okay. right i think that's a very important spectrum and it can be a very beautiful spectrum when you look at those individuals right but i think that life people are on a spectrum in every bit like 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 there's there's the gay spectrum and where you fall on that and there's like a, like for me there's a mexican spectrum and where you fall on that because like, like we're defined as frijoleros or we're defined as people as landscapers gardeners mm. whatever you know construction workers um and we're defined as you know many different mm -hmm. little pockets and for me it's it's i i like by definition i'm chicano because i'm born to mexican parents yeah. who were raised in the u.s yes. but but to a lot of people chicano is 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 dubbed as almost that cholo lifestyle mm. or that those you know like you know you follow aslan and you you know and and i i'm not that one i don't i don't feel i don't i don't even though by definition i may be chicano but to me i'm not chicano because like i i think because you've had though so many experiences to be able to go to mexico in your childhood i'm true to you my were, yeah. you were able to absorb that culture more than someone who could possibly not right because like i like I've, I've spoken to my friends who claim yeah i'm chicano and this and that and like the def the difference is like they've never been to Mexico mm -hmm. or their their experience with Mexico is the Tianguis right across the border in Nogales or Rocky Point. And, this is Girl. funny because my friend Juan, you know Juan. I love Juan. Huh. So Juan, he reps LA even though he's lived uh, 30 years <laughs> here in Phoenix, right? Juan, we got to talk. Juan, uh, yeah, we need to talk. <laughs> and talk, uh, he, he reps it. And every time I, I, I talk about going to Mexico, he's literally like, oh, you're going to Mexico? Oh my God, you're going to get killed. It's dangerous. So he doesn't have a connection with Mexico because he, I don't think he ever went 
I don't no. think he has family the way that we have family. Right. So he has an idea about what Mexico is. That is and it's so it's so not it's true. Not, I mean, no. I mean, it, it is true. It, it is true. But it's not as as bad as he, he but imagines. For the it most is. part, if you're not involved, it doesn't involve you. Right. But he feels that it doesn't matter who you are when you cross, and he's darker than us. <laughs> so, okay. So, <laughs> he he. Uh, he's a little yaki. He's still. <laughs> He's not from Sonora. <laughs> oh, okay. Where is he from? Uh, I think he's from... I don't even know. I got to ask him. Sorry, best friend. <laughs> he's from Mexico. Uh, I, I call him my Aztec prince. <laughs> I love that. Uh, but he... Uh, hey, daddy. He's, oh, he's, he's, he's Chicano. Yeah, absolutely. And he, I think... When, when I think Chicano, I think of Juan. And I think... Yeah. Cause, and and, and his funny. mom is from Mexico. I think, I'm pretty sure she was born in Mexico or either... She's first generation. So you can see kind of how it evolves. It's funny because when I think Chicano, I think LA. I know. <laughs> I think Dodgers. Because <laughs> a lot of the Dodgers. I think. Have, do you remember? I don't, you might be too young. Um, yes. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> the movie Born in East LA. Have you ever seen it? No, I don't. Have, I think I have, have you seen, oh, seen it? Oh, really? You just I, I just aged myself. <laughs> like that movie came out like in the 80s. 384 ish. It's with Cheech, That's and, when yeah, Cheech Marin. Self burn. Those are rare. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> when you self burn. I know. <laughs> Isn't it be on the show self burn for him? Huh? <laughs> Bitch, fuck off. <laughs> I quit. Where's my check? So. Um, yeah, no, I mean, you need to watch that movie because that's okay. what I think. When I think Chicano, it's this typical guy who was born in East LA, who would end. And but now that you mentioned that Juan reps LA, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. It makes sense, it right? Makes sense. And I, I. I it's 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 weird because these new generations of kids are, that are of Mexican descent, mm-hmm. Chicano, maybe third generation, fourth generation. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a thing where more Latino, more Hispanic, either Mexican or whatever country you're from, you're not enough of that. You're not you're not Mexican enough. Me, but then you're not also not American enough. It's like the, the whole Americans. Selena moment. You know, we're too, we're not, the Mexicans, we, we know we're not Mexican enough. To the gringos, we're not American enough. Yeah. It's exhausting. What was yeah. that scene when she's like, I'm, uh, estoy muy excited. Muy excited, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so those are the, the, the thing now is called uh, a no sabo kid, right? And then, yeah. So that means, the, 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 you correctly say, no sé, I don't know. Uh-huh. But. A lot of these kids will say no sabo. <laughs> no, or you know which other one? Because kids? they don't know Spanish. Right. You know which other one kills me? Have you ever heard them say asina? Asina. Like, like instead of saying, like, when they say, like, as, like we say, así como esto. Uh-huh. Right? Like, así, así lo quiero. Uh-huh. Be asina. Asina. But that that's more of a dialect. I don't think that's like a... Is that not like not a, so much a dialect, but... So you've heard it? Yes, I ha- yeah, okay. I have. Uh, See, to me, Is like, that a shorthand cultural, like, linguistic thing? I think that's what it ends up being. Because it's uh, I've heard it more from people, not only from Mexico, but also from Central and South America. Okay. But I think that's more of a thing from here, though. Because, like, I... like or maybe I, they I, adopted it here. Because my cousin said that. Well, maybe he my heard cousin, it. My cousin, Jeanette, says that. Maybe he heard it from... Or she heard it from somebody. That, she heard it from somebody who says like that. Because, but I'm like, when I've heard it, when I've heard that, it's usually from Chicanos who, who speak somewhat of the mm-hmm. language, for the most part. But they've kind of interpreted it. I mean, they, I mean, things are taken from. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like, I, like even like I'm pretty sure like art like, like even, like my cousins make fun of me, because they call me the Gringo Latino, because even though I speak the language and I'm very much in, for the, what I think is in touch with my roots, um, they say that my Spanish is different. Because I'm from up here. Excuse me. Well, there, there, there's all sorts of different words because of that. Like, for example, how would you say parking lot in Spanish? Estacionamiento. And then in slang or el northern par- states, el parqueadero. El parqueadero. The same thing uh, like a truck. Troca. Troca. It's, it's camioneta. It's camioneta. Yeah. You know, th- it's things like that. Yeah, it's yeah, just, yeah. And it's so normal now that. I mean, when, when I used to work with a previous company that I was a trainer and we would, I would work with a lot of mm-hmm. Hispanics, of Latinos. Yeah. And. My Spanish is very different from Peruvian Spanish or Cuban yeah. Spanish or Puerto Rican. Have you ever seen those videos on YouTube where they, or it's, I haven't even seen them on Facebook, but it's these videos where they compare to oh, yeah. Latin American, like, like even like a piece of steak to some of this is ternera uh-huh. or to Mexico's it's res, right? Cause yeah. it's beef, but to others it's ternera yeah. or to others it's, it's carne. Yeah. And you know, it's it, the diet, like the word, the smallest mm-hmm. things like, or like, like for example, Puerto Ricans. A bus or like a wagon is una guagua. Yeah. 
And to us, it's, it's un- and uh, for Mexicans, concha is a, a delicious, delicious uh, bread. bread. Yes, it is. And then in Argentina, I mean, I guess it could be delicious <laughs> to you, producer, <laughs> in Argentina too. But <laughs> I'm it allergic. Means, uh, vagina, vagina. They're referring a to concha. a lady's concha, right? Uh, so uh, you know, you know that that reminds me of when. Uh, uh, you and I, we worked at the same company for a while. We're not going to say who where it is, but there was this one. I don't know if you were in that training, but the trainer, she was from Puerto Rico. And how uh, she would just throw on the word uh, because she really meant, you know, grab me this Coge, and whatever. Yeah. Hey, coge me aquí. Uh-huh. Coge me eso. <laughs> <laughs> or like, like even the word coño. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, like coño. Like, in, in, like, for example, like, like to Puerto Ricans, you say coño. It's like, it's like, it's like saying fuck. The, and the funniest one that I've ever experienced was I went to go train at a facility in another state in Texas. Yeah. And we were kind of doing orientation. And we were talking about language differences, mm-hmm. right? And uh, we were talking about, no, we were talking about uh, events and like doing sports, right? Yeah. And because you would have to be doing sports uh, at this particular job uh, or teaching it, the lady was like, are they going, nos van a dar, are they going to give us a pito? Exactly. Uh, and she was Puerto Rican. I like the way she thinks. He was a Cuban or Puerto Rican. And the whole class. Do we each get one? <laughs> the whole class started like looking around laughing. Because... Mom, will they be assigned according to the class? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and in Mexico, pito is like penis. Right. Right. But in other places, I mean, you could also say pito like your car horn pee-pee. or. A silbato, right? Yeah. I've never heard that word. Yeah. And is it right? Silbato, silbato yeah. Yeah. So that. that's what she was referring to. A pito. But in the whole class, everybody kind of in Texas, a lot of Hispanic, a lot of Mexican culture. And they were just fucking laughing. And she's like, what? What did I say? <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny because like we take, we, like, um, we, it's funny because like you say, we, you say pito and we take it as it's penis. Mm-hmm. But bro, when you use it in... Like, pítale, like, it's yeah. honk at him. But you never, that you would never, never go to that. You never right. go to that until you say pito. pito. Yeah. And then, and it's like so many words. This show's brought to you by the word pito. pito. <laughs> the letter P. <laughs> so I just find it interesting that, that there's so many layers to oh, Latino names. Like, and even mexican Like, for example, yeah. like my excessive use of the word verga. Oh, and I'm sorry, I don't know if I should use that one specifically. Oh, our, our, our friend Dulce, she's, you know her. She was our guest for the Mother's Day. She hates, hates that word. That word, But she loves the thing <laughs> <laughs> that it refers to. Don't we all? Um, but it's funny because like, like if it's to Sinaloenses, that's that. You that's can say like, verga this, verga that. But that it like, doesn't mean it's that like, all the time. Have you ever Freaking seen like kids say that all the time? All the time. Yeah. yeah. Like, have you, have you ever seen like, like. Have you ever seen those 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 memes that say like this word? How do you, this word mean? How do like the same word means like it, the the association like <laughs> like 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 verga is like how you say what's up yeah. or like and say like verga like, what's, 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 what's up like what's up or like or even saying like verga like, like what the fuck yeah. is wrong with you like, <laughs> like you know like it's one of those words and everybody in Mexico even kids are using because I saw a TikTok recently where there was a kid riding a bike didn't say and there was a me. there was a man crossing the street and he's like the kids like. Quítate la verga. And you see, you hear everybody laughing in the background because it's funny to Mexicans. But if that was your kid, you'd be like, Fuck. no, like it was uh, funny because like I remember growing up, my grandmother uses the word a lot, right? Oh, I've heard you. you, you yeah. <laughs> so my nana uses the word a lot. And I remember one time we were in Culiacán. It was, I was there for summer and I was, uh, I was, you know, and when I growing up and when I was in Culiacán, when, when I would go to Culiacán, when, no, when, no, no, no. when I would go to Culiacán, <laughs> I was allowed free range. Like, okay, oh. just make sure you're back before when, you the, had to when, fit in, honey. when the street lights come <laughs> up, like you better be back here on the corner, right? Like that's where the mm-hmm. house was. And um no sé, I don't know if she heard me, but I was playing with 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 a friend that I have there named Yaret. And um I said, I go, I go, I don't know what we were talking about. And she was so pissed. Like she like washed out my mouth with soap. Like she was too far. Pissed. I'm like, lady, but you say it all the time. Like even like I was I remember that I, when my when my sister came when my sister came out, me uh me and my grandma were working at the shop. And um I don't know how we got on the subject. And she's all like, Oye, dicen, que, ¿cómo la ves con lo de la Samantha? And I'm like, 
well, you know, she's happy. Like, it's her. Like, I, you know, it's my sister. She goes, ay, dice, no sabe lo que se pide. Y dice, tan sabrosa que es la verga. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, I'm like, no, no. Like, in my head, I'm thinking, girl, you're right. I mean, you're right. I have, but I'm like, you oh, my. You act shocked. But like. I, have, I saw it, like, oh, my God. Like, <laughs> Like, no, no, don't say those things. So, I, I, funny, funny about language because yeah. those little Sabo kids, I, my, my, yeah. my nieces and nephew are Sabo kids. And they try. They really yeah, try. Same. But, but you know how we are. If you don't get a word right, you're going to get laughed you're at. You're going to live it up. You're not, not going to live it up. Yeah. Right. So, it's, it's, I, I understand why they're scared of, of trying, but it's sad that we don't allow them, allow them to, to try. Cause we're that's that's how we are fucking carrial all the time. So my nephew's the same way. Yeah. I know. Not, my name's my Stephanie. Yeah. Jennifer. They're a little better, but the it's younger like, it gets, the, the more the worse away. it gets. So yeah. like Stephanie's pretty fluent. No, she's not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> so like my but my nephew. You sorry, met, girl. I'm sorry. Girl, Stephanie, we're putting you on blast. <laughs> we love you. We love you. Um, but <laughs> so like my nephew, you've met Alex. Yes. So Alex is fairly fluent. Alex is pretty good in Spanish. And then it goes Eddie, who's he's decent. Mm -hmm. Brian. Or sorry, Rome. Rome. He tries. Uh -huh. He tries really hard. Yeah. And then Andy. Andy don't give a fuck. You don't give a shit. Like he like Andy say and to it's me in so Spanish. It's so valuable to to know Spanish, especially it living is. here in Phoenix it in is. the Southwest. It is. It's super valuable. So I I get it. I mean, I'm not perfect in Spanish either. Right. But I'm a little better than than them. Yeah. But see, like I grew up with the whole my dad, I and I remember we used to complain about this so fucking much. My dad told us, in this house, you can speak any language you want, but you cannot speak English. So what did that leave us with? Spanish. But don't you find it uh, funny that a lot of immigrants have the opposite reaction? They don't want people to speak, they don't want them to speak Spanish because they want them to fit in. Well, because they want them to fit, they want them to assimilate, so right. that way they're not looked at as, oh, these are the un probably undocumented Right, children. so I, I just find it really interesting yeah. how they'll have two different reactions. Yeah. And I mean... If I were a kid that was not taught Spanish and at this age, I'd be pissed. And a lot of people are pissed who don't know Spanish. Like you have, you've met a lot of my cousins. You've met most of my cousins. You guys have met most of my cousins and most of them yeah, don't speak Spanish. They don't speak Spanish. And so like literally it's a small pocket. It's literally my brother, my sister and I, and then my cousins, the Vegas. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of them. So like we're pretty much for the most part, the ones that are in Jeanette, mm -hmm. she's fluent, but everybody outside of that, like is barely, it's chopped. Yeah. And like we, like we, uh, well, my, my siblings being the smart asses that we were. So we took my dad up on that. We're like, okay, any other language? <laughs> so we thought we were bad, and we all learned French. Oh, my God. <laughs> As we're fucking taking French, it's literally a combination of the two fucking languages. Which we never will use. I took French, too. <laughs> we never right? fucking used it. I'm a, wait, <laughs> we, well, we I were, used it once, I used it once, and I'll never use it again. So, like, I, I, for, like, for, like, two or three years after I graduated high school, I kept in contact with my French teacher. And we would email back and forth, and I had to email it in French and blah, blah, blah. We, I used the translator, but I remember I used it in Europe when we went when we went to France. I thought I used it. <laughs> it was broken. It, the guy was looking at me like, "Remember to our say? first? Like, I speak English." Our, I was like, "Oh, my our first night in Paris, I thought I was badass. I know French. I know French." We went to go get a table, right? Uh -huh. And I I said it right, but I wasn't expecting a response. And this French lady is like, and I was like, um, <laughs> "No." I'm American. <laughs> I'm sorry. But she didn't mind because I think French people like when we try. Yeah. They probably laugh at us at, afterwards. Like stupid. American. Absolutely. But we got a table bitch. We did. <laughs> when I was with my mom and my dad, uh, when we went, and uh, the guy who was taking us to the airport was literally just taking us in circles in the parking lot. Like he couldn't find the gate to drop us off at. Mm -hmm. And so it was one of those things where it was like, I, I'm like, I need you to stop here. And my mom was like, stop right there. Like, you know, I'm like, I'm like, let me figure this out real quick. So I Googled it, translate. I'm like, I could pronounce that. And so I read it. My parents were very, very impressed. Like, wow, you know that? I'm like, yeah, I knew that. I'm over here fucking looking at Google and shit. <laughs> and I said it, and the guy's like, real quick, he came back around. He's like, and then he looks at me, he's like, close. Close. No good. No. Close. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm up. You got me where I needed to go. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it worked. It worked. Um, you know, speaking of that, now they got uh starting with the 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 old the, the new, this version because uh, I have the S20 on my phone, and uh, well my phone is the S20, mm -hmm. but now they have this thing where you could text and directly translate onto your texts. Like I didn't have that on my oh, on my last yeah. one. And me, I can speak and um I can speak fluently perfect Spanish. Yeah. 
uh, writing it, I'm very horrible, especially with all the accents, because mm-hmm. uh, we don't really know, we don't use accents in English. Right. Yeah. And uh, so that helped me out a lot. So then, uh, like my mom and uh, everyone that I would text in Spanish on my network that I have mm-hmm. in Spanish, like, hey, you've gotten so much better at Spanish. Like, has mejorado muchísimo. Has estado estudiando. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, absolutely. Me. <laughs> oh no, we had to learn to write it. Like my mom would give us the Reader's Digest, and then we had to sit there and read. The Reader's Digest her and then Spanish called Selecciones, I think it's called. But we had to literally read it to her. So that's how we would practice that reading. It reminds me of like commercials, Inglés in Barrera, like. Seriously. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we we, the, we could vision. have been the poster children. <laughs> and so like then we'd have to rewrite, like she would make us write like the page out of it. Yeah. And then like that's so that's how I learned how to how to read how to and write. write. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, my next topic is a little bit contra- not controversial, but pe- a lot of people are up in the air about it, which is the term Latinx. I'm glad you brought that up because I actually wanted to bring that up. Okay, good. I, wa- <laughs> I-, I wanted to talk about that. I, I-, I don't know where I lie. I kind of do. I know Latinx is to respect gender, non-binary. Like genderless, mm-hmm. non-binary, right? Um, but how how Spanish is is constructed is feminine and masculine words right and phrasing so i understand why they are doing it because a lot of words and to know and they're masculine yeah um but i don't mind it we don't mind what the, the, the fact feminine. that i have to say mexicana or mexicano but that's for me that's my opinion no i right. and i'm with you see for me for me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i hate to be that person oh i'm sure you do um, but for me, it, I think it's unnecessary. Like I, and maybe the whole I, Latinx thing. Yeah. Okay. Cause and, and again, I'm not, not, not to, 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 to diminish, downplay, the, to diminish mm-hmm. the, the non-binary, please. I I'm, if you know who you are, I am happy for you. Like I applaud you and I support you 100. But to me, it's like you, I get why they do it, but to me, it's, it's like, it's extra work makes me sound real lazy. <laughs> um, and that's fair. I've never heard you been described like that before. Ever. I know, right? I'm <laughs> always like on the go. You're active. Active. <laughs> Super active. Anyways, um, I just think it's too much. Like, I get it. And I, and I get that you don't want to be uh, put into a, a, to a gender that you don't identify as. And I'm sorry about that. But I don't know. For me, it's like, I, don't, I think it's too much. Like, I I, mm-hmm. I, I I'm trying to respect it, but mm-hmm. I don't mind using the feminine and masculine. And I haven't, I, I haven't met anybody that who who requested that for me. Right. And if they did, I would respect it. It'll take time to people for people to get used to it, especially older generations. I think that's one of those things that's going to grow with the, yeah. the generation. Who put but you it in can place. choose. You can choose not to follow it, but still respect. It. Absolutely, and right. that's where I think. Where I, then that's where I'm at. Yeah. If you ask me to to identify as they them. Mm-hmm. I will gladly do it. do it. Teach it was, me how to do it, though. Yeah. And then I'll do it. <laughs> exactly. I think it was my sister was telling me about somebody that she met who, um, you know, she kind of caught on to the fact that it's her and Gabby mm. is, that are in the partnership. And I, I just she's like, and she literally freaked the fuck out. She's like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I'm like, do I refer to you as they, them? I'm just learning all the new pronouns. Your sister said? With, yeah. She, that somebody had told her that. That, oh, that they wanted. Yeah, okay. just because of the simple fact that they were a, a, a gay, a lesbian couple. That yeah. maybe she's like, "Oh my god, I'm just learning." You know, do I have to? Yeah, oh, I, she I, thought that because they were a lesbian couple, you had to that, call them they them. Yeah, oh, okay. and my sister's like, "No, no, no." She's like, "We're still she and her," mm-hmm. and that's and that's. Yeah. A, but like, I love how there's some people who are trying to make the effort to respect, yeah. and so I'm with that. I, if you ask me to refer to you as they them or Latinx, mm-hmm. I will gladly do it. Totally. But my vernacular is yeah. Latino Latina, yeah. Hispano Hispana. Very, very well, that. No. Um, this is, I mean, the next topic is a little bit heavy. Okay. Because it... Well, uh, before that, I do have a question. What's up? Yes. Now, is that only for non-binary and st- sort of people? Because I also heard something about that uh, when you describe a group of Lat- uh, men, it's Latinos, and then it's women, it's Latinas. But if it's both, it automatically defaults to the male Right. Uh, mm-hmm. Male pronoun, the yeah. Latinos. And it's a group of the Latinos, right? Yeah, it's a group it, of it, Lat- Latino it people. kind of also like to balance out so it wouldn't be so patriarchal. And like, mm-hmm. So is there any truth to that? I'm sure that that's where the 
the thought is coming from. That's the, right? and that's what I read into when I was reading because I, w- I was researching this as yeah. well. And that's they the women it's it, it's it's women's also like the use. Some women like the use of that way, like in, specifically in that example because it gives them the it takes away them being referred to it and as as a man and it takes that power of of why does everything have to be masculine? Well, the default right? is always. The, the default is masculine, right? right? But oh, it takes that away. So they, they, they're like, I'm not a man. I'm a woman. So if you're going to refer to us as a group, it's Latinx because we're we're mixed. Mm-hmm. And I think that and that it comes into play there as well. And that comes kind of from laziness. Like you can't say Latinos and Latinos. So it's like, let's just call them Latinos. Because yeah. if you would have to, if it was a group of women and men, you would say Latinos and Latinas mm-hmm. or Latinos y Latinas. So I think a you lot say of it just comes from. Latina, right. no, but then again, it comes out feminine. Right. Which is good because we haven't really done that. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, yeah. if I you have, a, if you have, like, if you want to educate us a little bit more, yeah. if we're getting it wrong, let Absolutely. us know. Like, comment and, and and or email us or tell us what you think. She's what are you doing? Fine. What is the point? You're welcome. Fuck off. Um, but the next topic later um, is colorism. Mm. What do you mean? What do you mean? You know what colorism is? I do. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, I. I want to bring the subject up because okay. it it affects me, not that I'm affected, you know, in the way that people think affected, but I know that I know that me being light skinned has probably given me a, some advantages in my life, and I I'm looked at differently than maybe darker skin Mexicans or Latinos, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And this is, I mean, right now in this in this country, United States. Racism is at the forefront, right? Absolutely. So we kind of have to look at ourselves in our culture and look look deeply right. and be like, we are guilty a lot of the times of the same thing. Oh, as, a, as, a, as a community, as a culture. Absolutely. Of racism and colorism. We do because like, you know, like, cuando, cuando nos dice, ay, ya parece indio. Yeah. And to me that like. Or phrases like prieta. Uh-huh. Are. Or even Demeaning. even with uh, even with the, within our with our, within the Latino community, Mira, uh, toma negrita. or families not wanting them to marry into or what? marry a darker person, or this thing where we see light skinnedness as a a pro. Do you know where I think that comes from? Colonialism. Even before that, <laughs> well, what? yeah, I think that comes from religion. Because okay. look, look at look at why Jesus, why Jesus, why and, Jesus. They, and 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 they've they've shown that if they really take it back to that time and place, Jesus, well, there's no way in hell mm. he would have looked like that. There's an image of 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 Jesus or what people or scientists think that Jesus looked like, right? And it's, because of the region of where he was, yeah. And he is dark skinned, dark hair, big features, curly hair, yeah. So it's it's it is funny how we see. This white, as a supreme being, colored eyed, mm-hmm. um, straight haired Jesus, and 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 that's where I think like I think that somewhere along the line, that's where these. I mean, Jesus on the cross in any Catholic church is, besides Africa, because I've seen I've seen African a, a Jesus, black Jesus yeah, yeah, black Jesus, um, is going to be a white light skin, yeah, uh, person, and I think that's where a lot of this like superiority comes from with people who. Mm-hmm. Are of that lighter skin, mm. you know? Oh, because we resemble Jesus, like bro. That could be a big part of it because Latino America is, yeah. is filled with Catholic, the Catholic religion. Uh, right? Yeah, it's the predominant. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do we do? How do we change it? It's it, it's it's like you have to change that mentality of the way we do the gay mentality, mm-hmm. one person at a time. And I think that I think I, like for example, like when you look at movies, like what was that one that just well came representation out? has to change. That's one. And I think it's slowly starting because to. Because novelas. What do we see novelas? The same. The same. William Levy. Light-skinned uh, Terrible actors. actor. He's fine as fuck, but he's a terrible actor. Yeah. Um, but like, like, what was that? What was that? Roma. Was it Roma? The, yes. Did you ever see that movie? Like, she was viewed. At, like, I remember when she, when she got nominated for the Oscar. That was crazy. It was crazy. Only when she got nominated was she put on Vogue, Mexico. Right. So only it's only like, the, wow, really? I was very proud. Absolutely. And a lot of Mexicans were posting on Twitter, this is representation of, of Mexico as well as a lighter skinned person. Yeah. Right? Um, which is funny because we do it to each other, but we do. When we get it from the outside, 
we're very defensive. We're up in arms. We're up in arms, right? Yeah. Um, because when someone says, oh, you don't look Mexican, we're like, we're real quick to be like, what do you want me to do? Like, have maracas and a sombrero and like, be no. un grito. Like, but then w- our own culture will do it to each We do it to each other, right? It really is. So it's, it's really hypocritical. And I, I can tell you that not being dark skinned does not, how do I say this? I know my, where my privilege is. I know mm-hmm. that I have it. I know that I have it here in the United States because I don't get pulled over because of the color of my skin. Right. right? I don't get questioned if I'm a citizen because of the color of my skin. So I understand that I have privilege, but it doesn't mm. it doesn't stop me from being empathetic. It doesn't stop me right. from considering my family because I have family who 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 are a little darker darker skin than me, right. and I know that they're they probably have a way different experience than mm-hmm. I do. So I understand that I have a privilege, and I need to do more to stop any kind of misconception that I'm and the stigma out there. and the stigma. Yeah, right. Have right. you ever had any experience because of the color of your skin or because of what you look like? Besides being a, a gay big person, was it, has it ever been about skin color? Maybe not necessarily. I I don't know if it was because of skin color or just because of my race in general. I remember in high school, um, I was there was another student in the class who was misplaced in that class. It, like the, he didn't speak English very well, and I was a biology class, and I was trying to explain and translate to him what was going on and like where we were and helping him with the homework or whatever. And I was told by my teacher that if I wanted to speak Spanish to go back to Mexico, mm. first of all, you generalize me from being from Mexico, which I am, which you are. I'm, I I'm sure she know that. Right. But would she though? Because like, I like, I don't, I don't I mean, she probably did. She really, right. She, she probably did. Her student. But even then, but even then, like knew your mom, huh? <laughs> she probably knew your mom. Well, she met my mom really <laughs> quick after that. Um, but like, I, I I've never been, necessarily but it doesn't have to be a huge incident it could be a microaggression or series yeah. of microaggressions right? yeah because i've been called a stupid mexican i've yeah. been called uh wet bag, wet bag. Called- yeah. yeah i've been called all those things and it's not like i, I i'm not necessarily full of, like as dark or as 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 as, as dark as others mm-hmm. right but i think there's there's more of a darker tone to my skin like you look yeah. at my siblings and they're a lot lighter than i am they're more along the lines of you um, and so like, I take after that side of the family where we are a lot more mm-hmm. olive skinned. Mm-hmm. And so like, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've gotten it all. I've heard it all, but it's, and it's unfortunate because it's a lot of times that comes from our own culture. Yeah. It comes from ourselves. Like, uh, from we we our shoot ourselves people. in the foot all the freaking time. Yeah, we do. Which is so hypocritical because we get, it, like I said, up in arms mm-hmm. when, when we get it from the outside, but mm-hmm. we don't understand or it doesn't compute that we're doing it to each other. I think it comes back to like, and I think the, it's in History, every race, uh, societal. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it, it comes back to that thing of oh, we can do it to ourselves, but no one else can do it to us. But also, and that runs with a lot of other words and other languages mm-hmm. and in other cultures, which we don't need to get into right now. But it's true, yeah. and 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 we like we need to stop by correcting people. Like even if they're joking, even mm-hmm. if, if if we know who their family, or just recognize that you're doing it too, and, and, and be like, wait, especially fucked up. <laughs> yeah, like I like like you know I have a cousin who's who's who, her family's from southern Mexico, and or her father's side is from southern Mexico, and and people in southern Mexico tend to be a little bit more yeah. darker skinned right? And so um, yeah, because of history and indigenous people, exactly. There's a lot more indigenous Mestizos, influence yeah, down there, yeah. So like you look at that, and I'm like, you know, I remember once I I did call, I, I go I go, hey girl, like. I como parece Indian in esta foto, mm. and I, I can't believe I admitted to that right now. But like it, but it, that's part of owning it, yeah. right? We got to own is, it. Is is and so like I've I know that I've been guilty of it, and so like that has to stop. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I think we we got to recognize that we're doing it. Mm-hmm. That is not helpful to anybody, and it could hurt a lot of people's feelings. Absolutely. And we're just adding on to the freaking. And you know what I've stereotype. Met, and I've met gente de de. de the descendencia india mm-hmm. you know um indigena, there's a community there's indigena. there's a community of black mexicans absolutely like if you go to culiacan the, the chinos lay like there's a yeah. huge concentration of chinese influence there yeah. um and so like i've met some amazing people who are of darker skin who are of of more of a, of a true to that indigenous um heritage mm-hmm. that makes sense yeah uh who are by far amazing people mm-hmm. can cook oh 
girl. You know me. Mm. Um, but like, I think that there's this misconception. Well, I don't think there is this major misconception. If people took the time that to, to get to know them, you'd see that they're just like us. Yeah. It's not better than us because they own who they, they are, are to their core. And I could, I guess this brings up a different topic. Yeah. Well, one of the things before you do move on is that I see that too. And I'm glad you did bring it up because, uh, uh, of course, uh, with with doing this show, I also do several other shows. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that I get and um, from one show in particular that I have, it's two Venezuelan women, mm-hmm. gorgeous, gorgeous women that, that they are. But they wanted me to, like, try to move camera settings, like something where like, they can get more light skin because they are dark skinned until I finally asked why. Why do you want to try to be as light skinned? Like they wanted me completely wash it out, you know, the background, and everything just to. Just to like, highlight, you know, them more as light skinned people, and like, well, that that's I, I want to look pretty on camera, and it, no, it's it's who you are right here. You are gorgeous. Yeah. You come over here literally to give beauty advice, you know, nutrition advice, you know, uh, homemade re- uh, re- remedies and things yeah. like that Self-care, for beauty. Yeah, and uh, so the best way to do it is represent yourself Be you, yeah. because just because you're not white. That you you don't you don't think that you're worthy of doing it? No, yes. like me when I work with my lights with everything that I do, I like to bring out people's natural mm-hmm. tones and like because that's that's them right there. And and, and af- after after I uh, talked to her, after I talked to them about about it, they had stopped asking. They actually feel better on camera when Good. they act because they see each other like that. And um, I've even noticed that their makeup when they bring in when they when they come in they they stop over highlighting. And because that's another thing that, that you know, that's happens. A, that's a Mexican thing that we make fun of when your tia's and your face cousins doesn't match, are, doesn't match the neck. Yep. And that's a, li- a little glimpse of, of, of colorism. It right? is, though. Because they want to be lighter, so they have two shades, three shades lighter than their actual tone to present a lighter face. Right? I'm all, sweetie, okay, fine. If you're going to do that, do that, but blend. <laughs> but Blend. the act is no. I know. I, I'm. I'm. I'm, self- being, I'm. I'm joking, and, and, that, and that's the problem, right? Funny. And <laughs> I am funny, you <laughs> stupid bitch. Um, but no, no. It, it, I'm. What? No, into the microphone. Oh, sorry. I see. Now you made me look like a fucking thought. Moving on. I'm done. <laughs> I look like a dumbass now. <laughs> That did, that was not us. <laughs> I'm burning myself today. Self burn. Those are right. You're serious, you burning dude. I got enough today. burns with my my dude. My sunburn right here is terrible. You didn't put any sunscreen. See what happened. Uh, I did, but like it's funny. Did you not use protection in Florida? Yeah, on so many levels. Mask, uh, booty hole, uh, nothing. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I did not, Rod. You better go get checked. I'm a scare for you. I did actually, and I'm doing it right now because I. Right I now, do, I'm literally. <laughs> Right is it stick up there? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> bitch. Well, no, because I um I am doing a home kit test kit. Oh, okay. Go home. Okay. Good. Shut up. <laughs> um, fuck. Move on. Okay. <laughs> Stupid. So I mean, how do we how do we define ourselves? How do you define yourself now? Like as a your Latino ness? Because you said you are Chicano, right? By definition. By definition. But you really. I don't use that term. Yeah. So when you present yourself or the topic comes up, you're never going to be like, I'm Chicano. I, I don't even say I'm Mexican-American. Like, I'm Mexican. Me- that's what that that's another thing that I wanted to bring up because I am technically Mexican. You are technically I'm Mexican. Mexican. I have Mexican citizenship and American citizenship. Yeah. citizenship. But my, my story is a little weird because I was undocumented for the longest time. And by... Accident. <laughs> you long found time. out you were a citizen. <laughs> yeah. um, that's a different story. <laughs> I... I only was able to go back to Mexico to be with family, to see my tias and uh-huh. extended family and cousins when I was 16. Oh, wow. So my my story was, my my growing up was a very Americanized from yeah. 4 to 12. Yeah. No, 4 to four 16. To 16. So 12 years, right? So when I was finally able to to go to Mexico, this whole world opened up to me about my myself, my identity. Absolutely. And besides being gay, which was not even being explored yet. I had to be, I had to learn how to be Mexican enough because I mean, you know, when, when you go to Mexico and you're not Mexican enough or you're not getting the jokes, you're not getting the, Mm -hmm. the culture, they're going to make fun of you. Oh, absolutely. I was probably made fun of a lot. I'm a gringo Latino. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to kind of discover how to be myself, but also navigate being gay, hiding that, 
trying to be more Mexican so I can fit in. And then just kind of at this point, just accepting that I'm never going to be Mexican, Mexican right? enough, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to. But I guess it's weird for my story because I feel very American. And again, that colorism gives me this privilege of, of living in a world where my Mexicanness doesn't get in the way. Right. If you know what I mean. No, I get that. Like I, I'm not discriminated against because I'm Mexican in the United States. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm American enough to most people. Right. That don't know me. Don't, don't know me. Right. Right. So it, 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 it's weird for me to kind of define my my Latinos or Mexicanness because I have a weird story. Not a weird story. I, I'm, I'm sure it's a common story with, with a lot of people here. It, it's just navigating it through my gay Latino eyes. <laughs> <laughs> And by gay, I mean mascara. <laughs> yeah, a little. I shut up. It's Friday. Um, no, for me, it's it's. I I've always called it a minority squared. Minority right? squared. Yeah, because I'm a minority because I'm I'm, oh, I'm yeah. Mexican. Mexican. I'm a minority because I'm gay. So when you put the like, maybe it's squared is a wrong. I mean, it's two. It's two. Right? <laughs> I'm to the second power. Um, but like I I always say, <laughs> the stupid bitch over there laughing at me. No, I, sometimes I was really good at math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, they can see us, you dumb bitch. I, the <laughs> shit that I've said already. Um, no, um, I've always said that I'm a minority score. So I, to me, like I, I know that I will never be Mexican enough because I will always be seen as El Gringo Latino. I will always be seen. The, but you were raised on the other side. So tú eres del otro lado. So yeah. it's, it's diferente. No eres de acá. Um, and we stick out like sore thumbs regardless mm -hmm. by the way we dress, by the way yeah. we carry ourselves, by like... Our size. Our size. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like what we, you go to Culiacan and like there's a lot of tall people there. Yeah. My family's a lot. There's a lot of height in my family. But to me, I like I I don't... I identify as Mexican. Like I will always identify as Mexican. Even, and, and it's funny because when I break it down even more, I have family from both Sinaloa and Sonora. My mm -hmm. dad's side of family is from Sonora, from Hermosillo, La Costa Hermosillo. Yeah. Um, I have family in Hermosillo, Naco, Calanea, Agua Prieta. And it's funny because like we, we... Shout out to Obregón, everybody. Sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, de arriba Culiacán, cabrones. Um, no. But like, like for me, it's I, I've always identified as Sinaloense. Because like, that's the more... I knew more of that family. Like yeah. I spent more time with that family. Um, so for me, I've, I'm Mexican. I'm not... I'm Mexican... You're Mexican American. I'm Mexican American. But you ask me, what am I? I'm, I'm Mexican. Yeah. Like full-blooded. And that like, kind of goes into like ethnicity and culture and race Absolutely. and how do you kind of navigate that like i think like for me like if my like if you call me mexican american i might be a little bit offended by that will you why i i mean it is what i am because like to me it's like it's it's almost as if is it going back to that like you're not mexican enough so you it to me i don't know if i want to say this because almost i almost feel like you want to whiteify me okay does that make sense yeah but you can I guess because you're relating Americanness to whiteness, which is, I think, the problem in this country. <laughs> Seriously, and, yeah. and I'm guilty of it. You yeah. know what I mean? But like, like if you call me, this, I'm like, well, no, I'm a little bit more Mexican. And technically, American. we're all Americans because it's even, America. even Mexicans are Americans. The name of live this in America, country, United States, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, but like you call me, like my nephews, if they were to say that they're Mexican American, yeah, but uh, y'all barely speak the language. Like, right. I get that. But oh, for me, I've, what do you feel about those 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 second or? third generation Mexican Americans that don't claim Mexican at all or any any Latin American country they're just like I'm American now is that a, a move towards the right direction is it I don't think should so. it be should it be designated as right or wrong direction I think you can identify as whoever however you feel but you but you should in order to know where you're going you need to know where you come from and I think that I hate to sound cliche because that's exactly what it is but I think that the fact that I know what my who my family is, what they've been through, mm -hmm. um, the struggle that they've faced, and everything that, that that that's come along with it, has molded me into who I am today. And it also gives you the ability to be empathetic to to the culture, the new immigrants. Uh, yeah, especially. I hate to see a second or third generation immigrant who was born here, who doesn't really have a connection with their original country yeah. and they're just like anti-immigration even though you benefited fully from your ancestors immigrating and it's funny because i have I, I know people who are like third or fourth generation in the united states and they claim oh we're mexican we're mexican and they don't 
they don't know the language. And to me, that's huge. Like, I think that if you're going to claim a culture, if you're going to claim that you're this, try to make an effort to learn the language. Right. Um, and because language and is maybe, vital to culture. Absolutely. Especially our culture. Mm-hmm. Like, um, but like you're going to sit there and claim our cooking and you're going to sit there and claim mm-hmm. our history, but you don't know the history fully right. first off. And secondly, like, dude, like if you want to claim it, claim it. I'm also, I support that, mm-hmm. but claim all of it yeah. and own and learn the language. Not, learn the don't, true don't history. take little bits that you think are, are good and convenient for you. Mm-hmm. And then just leave out the rest, the hard things to talk about, like immigration, like immig- right. immigration, I'm an immigrant sexism because our, our country, our, our culture is very sexist. Mm-hmm. Um, own all of it. Yeah. Like, like, but, but here's the thing, like, and do I, better <laughs> and do like, seriously. Like I've always said, like, unfortunately our culture brings a lot of, a lot of things with it. Right. Mm-hmm. Especially to this country. They've brought a lot of their like habits. There's good, good and There's bad. bad. There's good and bad. There's good in any I, culture. I've always said, bring your culture, trae tu cultura, no tus costumbres. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. And to me, it's like, there's a lot, I know that growing up in Mexico and being, and being Mexican brings, uh, you had a, you had a fight for survival. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But you're in a country where you don't need to fight for survival technically to an extent. I mean, you have to fight for survival to feed and stuff like that. Right. Financially, that's a fight for survival. I think it's different for every person with their own struggle. Absolutely. And there are layers of, of, of but but you can, you, if you came here to better yourself, better yourself Mm -hmm. all around. Yeah. And this brings up, I think probably the last, the last thing we talk about, but, um, I was reading an article about, um, what American culture and values are, right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of anti-immigrant people will have the stance of, oh, you know, I don't mind immigration, but they need to assimilate and they need to have American values. What what is American value? value? I thought American value was pulling yourself up by your bootstraps. What do you think they are doing? Is working hard. What do you think they're doing? Having family. What do you think they're doing? What is exclusively American uh, values that they're not they're not assimilating to. I, I always think it's funny how they say an American value and they tend to go back to religion a lot of religion time. or whiteness or, or whiteness, right? But like uh, I find uh, I find religion specifically ironic mm. because you sit there and you say that an American value is based on a Christian faith. Sweetie, learn your history, learn your history mm. when. The pilgrims. Mm. When, mm, <laughs> when the pilgrims came, Speak. <laughs> when the pilgrims came, they came escaping religious persecution. persecution yeah. it, it, it was in the time of England was when England was converting to Anglicanism. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they wanted to continue to follow their their their, their the, the Christian faith the way they learned it. Mm-hmm. Why are you going to come here and expect everybody to follow yours when you were doing when you were exactly. leaving persecution? And that kind of goes to the saying of like. Uh, Re- history will repeat itself if we don't remember our history. And that's what I'm right? saying. This is, it's, it's, it's happening because those descendants of immigrants forgot what the experience of being immigrant is. So they have no idea how to relate. They have no idea how to empathize because mm-hmm. they don't, they're not, they're not affected mm-hmm. <laughs> really by what's going on. Yeah. And they lose touch with so much and, and you lose touch with who you really are. Cause there's no real, there's no genuineness in you because mm-hmm. you don't know where you come from. And like, I, I think of that movie, uh, did you ever see Mi Familia? Yes. J-Lo was in it. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. She's crossing that river with the baby. Yeah, she looks yeah. so cute. <laughs> but like, do you remember there was their last, I forget what their last name was, was it Moreno? I don't know. I think their last name was Moreno in that movie. Because William Moreno- Way to plug your fucking name. <laughs> Stupid bitch. Way to make things about yourself. <laughs> I never. <laughs> no, well, there was. Uh, wait, it gets better. One of the brothers, his name was Guillermo, and he changed his name to William in the movie. He's the attorney. Oh, uh, yeah. And so that makes me think of that, that there are people who do that. There are a lot of people who. who oh, yeah. Americanize their names. Who Americanize their names. And it's just like, I love my name. I mm-hmm. hated it growing up because it was long as fuck and I mm-hmm. learned how to write it all. Back but, to the laziness. Back huh? to the laziness. Back to the laziness part, right? <laughs> but it's funny because my, my name is Guillermo, mm-hmm. but I was actually named after my Irish grandfather, whose yeah. name is William. So they just gave me the Spanish translation of it, right? But the, like, I look, I embrace, like, I love the name now, Guillermo, because mm-hmm. it's, it, to me, it sounds like a strong name. I would yeah. never want to get rid of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, I think it, it comes a lot with a lot of people do that. And you lose, when you lose that, when you lose your your base, I think it's very unfortunate. It's sad. I almost feel sorry for you mm. because you've, you don't know who you are. Yeah. 
if that makes I mean, sense. to a certain extent. But yeah, to an extent, right? Right. But because like, we, we say that because we have the experience of having this culture, this strong, strong culture. Mm-hmm. But if you've never had it, you can't compare. And that's fair. Right. So you can't but see, understand. But, but, but see, but, but, but you can allow yourself. Yeah, you've never had it, but you've seen it because you mm-hmm. see what you see. You, we live in a day and age where you can't go without seeing anything. Right. But you have to have, you have to, you have to value it for it to be, be important to you. True. So if you don't value That's it, fair. then you can't really be like, oh, I'm missing out. And I get that. But to me, it's just like, I just like, I, I don't know. Maybe I take it a little bit differently because like, to me, it's like, there's no excuse to not know your heritage. You can't say, oh, I didn't. Yeah, I, but didn't if you well, I, I think all of that goes down to the parents and how yeah. important, Agreed. how, how, how much, how much importance, because if something is important to parents, then kids Most will the naturally time. be you like, yeah. Yeah. Why, yeah. why? Like even their own curiosity, why is this important? Yeah. You see it all the time with like sports teams. You know, they get, my dad was always a something fan, so I'm that way because why? Oh, yeah. I saw learned, him get excited about it yeah. and everything, and so I would do that. And uh, so it, it, especially with culture, if uh, if immigrants come here and they just want to be American so they can have that better life and everything and blah, 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 mm-hmm. they may have the best intentions, but they're creating people who don't know that they're yeah. – that they're missing out on something, okay. and and like you said, if they don't know about it, they don't care. That's true, but and it's funny though because like I'm on the flip side of that. Like my, I, we never grew up doing an altar. We never do a, you know, like for a Day of the Dead. Mm-hmm. We visit our family members. Well, that's a more star. Southern Mexico tradition, not so much Northern where we're. And, from. The, and that's true, mm-hmm. but like we we like on the Day of the Dead, like we go, like my family goes to Naco. They you know they they have coronas and flowers to everybody who's passed on. Um, so that's still big for my family, mm-hmm. but we've never done the altar and the ofrendas and stuff yeah. like that. But see, but that's something that I find beautiful yeah. because it keeps you in touch with, with your ancestors mm-hmm. and with those who went before you and you're honoring them. Right. Yeah. So like, I, I, I didn't know about that until, you know, until I got older and I wanted to research that because to me, yeah. I, even though it's from Southern Mexico and my family is more central, it, it, it only enriches me. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. But know. that you're, you're taking initiative. Because right. Sorry. That that's your prerogative, right? Not always everybody else's. That's true. So, I think this is a really good conversation. I think there's a lot more about this topic that we can talk about. And I think and we will later. We'll probably we'll revisit. We'll, we'll revisit because this is fascinating to me. It uh, absolutely is. And I'd love to. I'd love to. I would love to bring somebody in who is Chicano who can kind of give me yeah. their 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 take and 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 if they have regrets because I know that uh, I've met a lot of people who are Chicano who don't speak Spanish who do regret their parents' decision not to teach him yeah. or not to push it on them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would love to that. Let's look into okay. that. Great. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope you join us for our next show. Um, I know we got a little deep, but we sometimes we get some deep. depth. Yeah. Sometimes we, we get, get a deep, deep, like that somewhere. guy got deep in you in my <gasps> <gasps> oh, Bitch, I have family that watches. <laughs> <laughs> Did I say something wrong? I mean, no. They know... Well, it's not something they don't know. Anyways, about you. we're moving on. Thank you so much for joining us. It you live tweeted it. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Please Thank come you so back much. next time. Get on our socials and please email us about any topic you guys want to talk about. What are our socials? What are we on Facebook? On Facebook, we are Hey Bitch Podcast. Hey, the hey podcast. Bitch Podcast. The podcast. The podcast. Get it right. Uh, on Instagram, hey, we are Hey Bitch The Pod. Hey Bitch The Pod. On email, we are Hey Bitch Pod. At Gmail. Okay. And then mine is dang az86. Boom. I got it. It took a minute. I saw that pressure. <laughs> like, you were trying to open up. Like, I'm waiting for like, <laughs> wait, I have to save a bitch. No, I got it. I got it. Okay. And I am uh, insta underscore memo mem. Insta underscore memo mem. Find me. Follow Find me. And follow I follow me, back. Share. Please share this. Yes. I, we want to share this to you. everybody we can. Uh, but sometimes we need a little bit of help. And every, if you like us, like time. it. Like the, the post, uh, share it. Love you, bye. Love you guys. Love bye. bye. Thank you. Bye.